Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. This is a quick demonstration how to do a deep gash for like a special effects. Um, it's a pretty easy, affordable um, demonstration. All you need is some toilet paper, scissors, glue, some paint, usually a foundation that matches your skin works really well. Start laying out wherever you want that gash to be like I'm doing right now. I want to do it across the face um, just for the demonstration, but you could really do it anywhere on your arm. Um, whatever the scene calls for if you're if you're filming a scene or if you're just doing like a dress up for for a party or something um, go ahead and lay that down with uh, the glue Elmer's glue make sure it's non-toxic uh, make sure it's something that you're not allergic to and also try to make sure that you shape it you see the, the way I'm shaping it now I didn't do a very good job of shaping the second one you could also cut the strips of of toilet paper by the way it has to be single ply and if you saw right there in the beginning of the video that I um, took the two plies apart, it doesn't have to be, but it, it helps so that it lays thinner on the skin. And just put that down. Now, this is also something that's not going to last a very, very long time. As you start to move, um, it'll start to change. Go ahead and get yourself a paper clip. Make sure whatever you do this with, it's not sharp. You definitely don't want to hurt yourself. And I put that paper clip all the way through, just opening up a little space and get some scissors. I used a, a large pair of scissors. I, usually I use a smaller pair, but I only happen to have a large pair on hand, so I, I ended up using a larger pair. Be very careful with the scissors. You don't want to hurt yourself um, with a small pair or a large pair. Just don't cut your skin. Uh, go ahead, get your paper clip again. Make sure you open up that space so you don't have to force it too much with the scissors. And you go up and up and up. Uh, you could also open this a little bit wider. Um, whatever you want to do, whatever the scene calls for. If you have this in a place that doesn't move as much, let's say you have it on your back or you have it on your arm, a place that doesn't have so much flexion, like your face uh, flexes a lot because of your facial expressions, it'll tend to last longer as well. It's pretty good just for a scene. I'm sure that if you use some more professional materials, you could get something that is a little bit better. Now, uh, this is a part where I had mentioned, uh, typically you're supposed to use a foundation that matches your skin, and that is really perfect. Um, but I didn't have that, so I just tried to match, um, quickly match some, some paint that I had to, to my skin tone. Um, I don't really recommend this if, I mean, matching the paint. Uh, what I do recommend is finding that foundation. You know, go to any CVS, Walgreens, any pharmacy and find yourself some foundation that is like your skin or close to your skin. And, um, you might have to use the red, though, um. You can see I haven't even used any red and it starts to look red in there uh, because of the contrast and the, and the depth of it. So yeah, believe it or not, I haven't even used any red at this point. But you do want to use red and black and you might have to find paints for those. You could probably also find that type of thing in the makeup aisle. Uh, if it's around Halloween time, you can go ahead and get like that fake blood and put it in there if you don't mind getting messy. Sometimes the scene calls for that. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and if you do it this way, also, you might make the mistake that I did, which is I ended up using um, cadmium red light, which was a little bit too orange. And then I had to go back and try to adjust it again. At this point, it's not bad. You could probably um, get away with just this, especially if you did have that foundation and, and just a sponge to to um, break up that that lighter color. But this is a technique that works pretty well. I learned it a long time ago from from a YouTuber. Unfortunately, I don't know that YouTuber's name right now, so I can't give them credit. But you could find many demonstrations like this online. It's definitely not a secret. And um, yeah, it's been a while since I've done this, but maybe um, when you have an event, this is a pretty inexpensive way to to get made up. And, and it really does have an interesting effect. You know, everybody stares. Uh, you do want to get some black in that wound uh, to give it more depth. This is what I was talking about with the cadmium red light. I was trying to give it like a, a swelling effect. like, um, And it, it doesn't look too bad if it was like a burn. So maybe you could do um, a burn with cadmium red light. But uh, for me, it was just a little bit too orange. So I actually tried to match my skin tone a little bit more. And um, I think I did. It's not a perfect match. But like I said, most of this struggle was because I didn't have that makeup foundation that matches my skin. Otherwise, this process is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and pretty effective. 
uh, I have done the three or like a four gashes across the face and you really do get a lot of stares. People do tend to uh, pay more attention. Um, so yeah, yeah, I just try to finish matching up the, the skin tone and that's pretty much it. Maybe I went back in with a little bit more red. I opened the, the gash, quote unquote, up and just made sure that I, I was covering um, as much as I could. I, I learned my lesson and I actually used some alizarin crimson mixed with that skin tone that I mixed um, to create the swelling effect around the wound. So a lot of this is the painting part of it, but the painting is also very straightforward. I think if you've been in my class, you should definitely be able to do that. Well, that's it. Have a nice